Hey guys, what's going on? Lucky here. So one of my good customers is uh, Dick Wagner's Tuning on Redondo Beach Boulevard and uh, in the city of Lawndale. So that's almost Redondo Beach, but kind of Lawndale. It's in, a, it's in a nice little area. And uh, I do all of their, well, major air conditioning stuff that, takes a, that would take them a lot of time. I can go in there and knock it out pretty uh, effectively. And I do a lot of their wiring and instrument clusters, steering columns, stuff like that. Um, when the cool thing about working with them is they schedule stuff around my schedule so that allows me to continue to do work for them um, way back before power tour so it's been a couple of months I think they told me about a super clean Chevelle and here it is um, 71 I think maybe 72 uh, this thing is just amazing it paints super nice vinyl top car I see no rust no damage has the correct rims and tires on it with correct center caps um super clean seat belts factory tack four speed car bucket seat console i mean this thing is super nice trunks clean inside and out so the gig was how do you make this car cooler it's easy you just add some vintage air so he got a hold of vintage air and got a uh, kit that's specifically designed for this car condenser goes in the stock location it mounts without drilling a bunch of holes or anything um, there's another bracket right there so you don't even have to mount the dryer the dryer mounts to the condenser once again you're not drilling any holes in the car they bend up all these aluminum pipes so that you route around everything um, I do some minor modifications in the engine compartment well actually to their kit so I can put all the hoses inside the fender between the fender and the wheel well and i'll put an adele in there to hold them so they don't move around but the kit's super complete i love vintage air um, they give you this bracket right here to mount the whole um, evaporator under the dash and they want you to drill holes through the firewall what i generally do is panel bond that to the firewall uh, but now we're going to take out the heater box and put a block off plate there so that will bolt to that block off plate. So once again, we're not drilling any holes in the car, keeping it clean. It comes with a condenser, comes with brackets that are bare metal, so I'll have to media blast those and then paint them. I think they're in here, yeah. So it's a big block car. So the brackets hang the AC compressor up real high above the power steering. But yeah, everything's in there. Just need to clean it up, paint it, put it in. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Oh yeah, these are the adapters to hook to the stock vents down to the aftermarket hose style. Block offs, defrost vents. So yeah, the amount of work involved in installing this is a lot more than normal. I do a lot of under dash ones because they're pretty simple, but behind the dash, I have to take out the entire dashboard. That means removing the uh, the um, upper dash pad and then dropping the steering column and then removing the wiring harness the fuse box uh, and the entire lower dashboard which is a big fiasco i'll take some pictures along the way so that you guys can join in the fun with me okay so i was moving forward with the project of air conditioning in the chevelle as you can see i've taken out the entire instrument panel um, it's sort of just one of those upside down squeeze your fat fingers into all the little nooks and crannies to get a hold of the little bolts. Um, nothing super complicated. It's all pretty straightforward. I mean, the basics are take off the dash pad first so you can actually see down inside there. Um, unbolt the wiring harness in the engine compartment just right where it plugs into the firewall. You can kind of see. Yeah, you can see the hole down there. And then you take out the two bolts. You have to unplug everything out of the out of the front of the fuse box. It's only a couple of accessories. And then take out a couple of the bolts that hold the fuse box, which is also the plug, through the firewall. And uh, you know, make sure everything's disconnected. Disconnect the rear engine, the rear body harness, chassis harness. Disconnect the uh, cruise control if it has it. That's the cancellation switch right there. The brake light center, always unhook the brake light center. 
because they break as soon as you drop the steering column or pull on the harness that thing just breaks you got to go buy a new one drop the steering column don't forget to unhook the steering the uh speedo cable and um there were some auxiliary wires that i had to cut that went through the firewall i don't know what they go to some aftermarket stuff there's an aftermarket oil pressure gauge and then some sort of i don't know it might be a choke cable or something and then um, if the car has the optional rear speaker, don't forget to unplug that from the back of the radio and the antenna. And if you think about it, that's about all that's connected. And then there's a bunch of supports and reinforcements to stop the dash from vibrating and rattling and stuff. Pull all those out. Those are all 7 sixteenths. And then pull out the whole dashboard. Careful. A uh, uh, good tech tip is always uh, tape up the steering column with some towels. Um, because when you pull out the last couple of bolts, the dashboard wants to lay right on top of the steering column and it will scratch it up. And if it's a restoration like this, someone will notice. Um, I made a note of some of the things that I saw when I took this thing out, like someone had glued in the broken AC delete plate that goes right there. So that's one thing. There's a bolt that's missing right here. Um, this bolt was, I'm sure, a rattle in the car. There is no glove box light. Um, Someone has done a restoration on this. All these brackets are new. Um, and they're all kind of put together poorly. I'll be straightening all that stuff out. Um, this harness is supposed to be secured and it's not. It was just kind of stuffed in here. Um, there was a, yeah, some sketchy stuff, but we'll straighten all that out. So the dash pad is pretty simple. It's just some Phillips head screws that go under the dash, right up in the front. This is actually an original dash pad, not a restoration, and it's super clean. So I'll try and be careful with it. It's, uh, I'm sure, very brittle, but it looks nice. So those screws are right here under the dash, actually on, on top of the dash. I'll show you where they are because they're kind of hidden. It's really easy to take that out. It looks like a big job, but it's not. But there's a hole, there's a screw going through here, 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 and here. And if you open the glove box, there's two going up through there. And then you just take the dashboard out. I've done fuel injection on these cars and uh, it works just like that. You take the dashboard out, run the wiring, or you take the dash pad out, run the wiring harness in, and then you can set the ECM on top of the glove box. And it's out of the way. But, so now that's out. Next thing that comes out is the heater box. To do that, I have to pull the wheel well out, remove the battery, uh, heater hoses, and the wheel well. Then take out the heater box, heater core, blower housing, and then we'll be down to the bare firewall. It's a lot of work, but it's totally worth it. Air conditioning rocks. Okay, so on the Chevelle, the kit from uh, Vintage Air, it comes with a block off plate for the firewall. Um, in my opinion, I mean, it, it looks cool with the block off plate, but I think it looked better. In fact, that this is a number matching car to go ahead and leave the heater blower housing on there. That's just the blower housing, no heater core. There's nothing on the other side. So I modify the block off plate. Can't really see, but see now right there, it blocks off where the old heater hoses used to come through the firewall. That blocks off the whole part of that and then underneath I modified the piece so that the heater hoses or the new heater hoses and AC hoses will come through where the blower motor was and that's all sealed and attached so that's what it looks like from this side and on this side it's just smooth blocked off so that's the actual piece that they give you and uh, I just modified it so you couldn't see it in the engine compartment and put that blower housing right back on so in first glance when you look in here it looks modified it looks completely stock with the exception of the chrome dot big block but um yeah it's a real car i had a hard time modifying the firewall just beating on it with a hammer and then blocking it off so i didn't that's where i'm going with um more to come. What's going on? So this is the finish up of the 71 Chevelle. It has the vintage air controller in the stock location. 
I added these two vents underneath here. They're actually part of the kit. If you get the kit that is a non for a non AC car, I did hook these vents up right here. These controllers don't do anything. It's not there. There's uh, how hidden the under dash unit is. Um, other than that, it looks clean and stock on the inside. There's Ben Lincoln Towing here to tow it for me. Uh, compressor mounted right there, painted the brackets. The brackets are all part of the kit. I have to change one fitting to a 5 8 but they like to use those heat shrink hoses. Um, there's the condenser, the dryer, stashed the lines. Ran all the lines up inside the fender well. Put the stock blower housing back on, even though there's nothing behind it. So it looks somewhat stock, except for that big giant MSD box right there. I'll do a little touch up paint work right there on the uh, fender well. But other than that, AC lines are stashed down there behind the core support. And that's it. That's the whole vintage air kit installed. Man, this is a nice car. All right, see you guys.